Hey everybody, it's Amy. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, life has just been kind of crazy. Uh, for the past year, uh, I got married and then moved into this new apartment. Got a new dog. Her name's Gidget. Uh, and with moving, I had to set up an entirely new altar, which is the first altar I've had in a very long time. <laughs> what are you doing? And so I figured I would do a Witchy Wednesday for y'all, uh, showing you what's on my altar. Now, I know I did a video before of, like, how to make an altar and, and, and how to, but I was just going to go more in depth on what's actually on my altar. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff. It's like, I didn't really know where to start. Uh, I was thinking, well, let's go least important to most important, but everything on my altar is important to me, be it a keepsake or part of my entire, you know, setup, my, my worshiping setup. Uh, so I think I'm just going to start with one end and move to the other end because I'm not entirely sure, uh, what else to do. So, um, I hope y'all enjoy and I hope it inspires you to, uh, build your own altar and enjoy it as much as I do mine. <music> on the side of the altar is um, a bunch of keepsake papers including uh, Evil Supply Company's uh, Friday the 13th $13 prints. I get them every year. Well every year there's every time there's a Friday the 13th uh, I get one and uh, a lot of these are just love notes <laughs> from my husband and uh, things that I want to keep but I don't really do scrapbooking so <laughs> They go on my altar, which is love jars. Uh, these I actually got at Target one Halloween. This is premium toadstool clip clippings. Clippings. This one is spider venom, and this one is uh, ghost screams. Also, you can see my collection of the uh, low kai bracelets that I tend to wear more in the summer than anything else, and so. Yeah. There's these bottles. They're great for keeping things, but they're also just good for the aesthetic. <laughs> if that's what you like, which I do. This is my gemstone tree. I got it when Stephen took me to uh, some caverns that are around here. And in the gift shop, they had this, which looks like to be amethyst with a tree made of citrine. And I just, I absolutely adored it and thought it was beautiful and decided that I needed it on my altar. This is Fingle Rick. <laughs> he is a pump kid from the Beast Peddler. I got him a couple of Halloweens ago when she started putting up pump kids. I absolutely had to have him because he has the uh, what I call the Adventure Time face and his name being Fingle Rick. <laughs> I love it. If you've never heard of the Beast Peddler, uh, they have an Etsy, and from what I gather, they have a lot of these uh, mandrake roots and pumpkins. Basically, they have a garden, and these things grow or either show up in the garden, and she kindly puts them up for adoption. <laughs> and so, I have Fingal Rick the Pumpkin. And it's one of my favorite things, and that's why I put it on the altar, because I know he'll be safe. Plus, he thoroughly enjoys being around all the rocks. This is just one of my many, many rock collections. Crystals, whatnot. You have some citrine. We have a big chunk of... Well, there's the quartz. Let me see if I can get these to not fall out of here. Uh, of amethyst. Uh, a broken hematite ring. And it's just a collection of tumbled stones, raw stones. It's just where I keep all of my crystals. I also have a bag of crystals I haven't done anything with because I don't have anything to put it on. Uh, JT and Christina got married, and those are my friends. And they, uh, they went to South Dakota for their honeymoon. And South Dakota has a great deal on uh, 
quartz and those kind of things. So they brought me back just a bag full of them. Yeah, they, they went on their honeymoon and bought me back a present. But anyway, well, basically I heard they were going to South Dakota. I was like, please, here, let me give you $10 and bring me $10 back worth of quartz. And it was a very large bag. Um, but yeah, I collect, I have an obsession with, with rocks, with crystals, and just, I love them to death. They're just so pretty. I could sit here and stare at them constantly. I, I keep them in this little thing. Uh, it's just a little antique crystal thing that I found. This is obvious. It's uh, a white stage smoke cleansing stick, which pretty much if you're into any type of the craft, <laughs> you're gonna run into these. But what I'm more interested in showing you is this, which is a plate that I actually made in ceramics when I was in college. And it turned out to work beautifully as an incense burner and a um, sage stick holder. The, the color, uh, the glaze was called Angel Eyes, which is probably one of my favorite glazes that, that ever existed because it's blue and it breaks brown. Recently out with friends, I got the biggest chunk of carnelian that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it reminded me of a dragon egg and I just couldn't pass it up. I absolutely loved it. Still do. It's probably one of the happiest happy stones that uh, I've ever encountered. That's why I picked it up and I was just like, no, I have to have this. There's, there's no way that I can pass this up. This is my athame. I got it recently at uh, the, the fest, the little October fest kind of thing around here. Uh, I've been envying these for a long time. Uh, I'm more of a wand user than I am an athame user for directing magic and things like that. But I've always wanted it. Now what this is, is an opalized glass knife. An athame as I call it. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's handmade by someone around here. I get the the color to really come out but it's it's just absolutely beautiful it's made of complete glass and fairly sharp jagged I would hate to be stabbed with one of these it'd be like a one-time stabbing but it'd be pretty good <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite things that I've gotten recently to put on my altar it's absolutely beautiful it stays in this lovely little sheath and I try my best not to drop it because I'm a terrible, clumsy person. <laughs> this is my cross. <laughs> uh, JT, my friend, actually helped me make this. He basically just broke some wood down for me and then I uh, wove them together with this uh, yarn. It is a very basic, very simple cross that I have put like the 90s What Would Jesus Do bracelet on it. I've got a, ro a dried rose on it. This is a raven necklace, copper necklace that I got when I was in Alaska. And so I've just kind of decorated the cross and it sits in the middle of my altar because I felt like as a Christian witch, your altar really needs a cross. I have two white candles that sit in front of the cross. This is the God and Jesus candles. I used to make my own candles, I just haven't gotten around to it because of all the moving and stuff like that. I didn't have a chance to get new oils and make new candles. My favorite Jesus candle was a mixed scent of um, gardenias, coconut milk, and lime. The scent itself, you really couldn't tell those, but when it's all mixed together, it's just, it's almost, it's happy. It smells happy to me. But for now, I just use these basic, like the seven day candles that you can get pretty much anywhere uh, for representation until I can get back into it and make my own candles. All right, there are four candles that sit in front of the white candles, and those are my uh, directional angel and element candles. They sit on like a Walmart plate so that there's no like wax that gets on my tapestry down there. So I'm not gonna show you the Walmart plate, but these candles mean a lot to me because I go specifically and try to find scents that remind me of things. This is for uh, 
the Archangel Michael, South, and Fire. And it's usually some type of a red candle, but it's often cinnamon scented. Uh, this is just a correspondence that works for me. Uh, it can be anything that you want. If, if Michael doesn't even have to be fire for you, they can be in a totally different element. Uh, it's just, it's really what appeals to you. But this is generally what appeals to me. It smells like red hot. <laughs> Uh, this one is for East, Air, and Gabriel. I usually tend to stand for the, uh, tend to go for the white candles, sorry, and they usually tend to be, like, jasmines and gardenias. I think this one is actually, like, fluffy towels. It just has a real clean, crisp scent to it, and it just, it really fit for me for Gabriel. This one is going to be North and Earth and Raphael. This one is more of a, a faint scent, but it's more like a patchouli or a pine. I go for the, the earthen scents. Why not, you know, for Earth? <laughs> and so I tend to st stick toward like some type of herbal scent for that one and usually a green candle. This one, which is probably my favorite, is for Water West and Uriel. Um, it is, I almost want to kind of like men's cologne, but it, it just has that clean out of the shower scent. And that's just kind of where I went with the water. And so I just put all of these in their respective, um, uh, directions, uh, depending on where I am, I actually look up which is north and all that and, and set them correctly, uh, so that they're, they're there. Um, I'm very careful with these. I don't light them often unless I just really feel the need. Like, I really feel like I need that extra protection is when these come into play. This is actually one of my newer crystals that I got recently. Uh, it's just your basic quartz crystal. And it's just so clear and so pretty to me. And it just sits on my altar and reminds me of just... Of purity almost but it's also a good energy holder like if I'm just really low on energy one day I pick this up because I usually drop a little bit into it each day and it gives me uh, the energy to keep going this is Gillian this was my custom-made uh, mandrake root from the beast peddler they uh, you can see his little bitty eyebrows absolutely adore the beast peddler wish I could afford more I would just have my own entire garden of these beautiful beautiful creatures uh, I'll leave a link down below so that you can possibly get your own so I have dragon's blood ink on my uh, altar as well which is what I use for sigils to really give them an extra boost um, it's made from the dragon blood resin so it, the dragon blood resin, which is when ground up, is very red, and so you give this lovely red ink. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite things to use for sigils. Uh, it just kind of gives that, you know, use a quill pen and use the ink, and it just gives that extra bit of uh, fantasy along with it to really to to get that energy up behind the sigils. So that's pretty much everything on my altar. There was a pan through at the beginning and there's like little things that I really didn't get into. There's a figurine of a woman that I got from my mom. Uh, there's like, I have a tendency to have that kind of represent the, the female side, like the Holy Spirit. But it's just kind of a representation and it's not really, like if I find something different, I would put it there. Uh, there's a backflow incense burner. There's a obsidian raven, tiny figurine. And there's just little things dotted across there that just are there because I put them there and they're for aesthetic reasons. Um, everybody's altar is almost like a, a personal, it's almost like a journal. Uh, your altar can be completely different from mine. It can be smaller, it could be larger, it could have completely different things. Um, your altar is... A part of you and that's why it's your place of worship it's it's where you can do your thinking and your praying and your worshiping and it should be an extension of who you are so when there are these videos they're like this is how you set up an altar this is how you do things this is how I do things that doesn't mean that you have to follow it uh, it's it can be a guideline it can just be a helpful creative thing for you 
Um, so don't worry too much about it. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's. It's yours. So I'm hoping to do more videos for y'all for y'all soon. Um, I'm not entirely sure what y'all are looking for, so I'm going to try to come up with some stuff. But if y'all if y'all have things that y'all want to see, let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all of you that have been watching and have subscribed and have taken up for me in my comments when people decide that they want to be very judgmental. I have been watching, I have been reading, and I'm very appreciative of, of all the kind words. Um, I hope that this video helped some, and I hope to see y'all soon with another video. So until then, if you're new here, please subscribe and let's hang out some more. <laughs> and uh, the, to y'all that have already subscribed, thank y'all for being here. And I will see y'all later. Bye.